Shield. You know, if you have heard of all of these, you don't get a medal, right? No need to boast about it in the comments. It's just a headline, not a personal attack. Anyway, here's another video looking at the less remembered titles for a particular platform. Today, it's Microsoft's mid-range PC in a gigantic case with an even more gigantic controller, the Xbox. And what a machine that was. First, hitting subscribe, so I'm told, makes you incredibly attractive to whoever it is you're into, and if you're not into anyone, it just makes you a fundamentally better person. There are no guarantees of this, but it is scientific fact. Back to the Xbox, I'm not focusing solely on exclusives here. Some in the list came out on the other consoles of the day, the PS2 and GameCube, as well as on PC. Some only came to Xbox. That's not the point. What is the point is that these are games a lot of us forgot even existed, for good or for ill. And it's always fun to have your memory jogged and go, huh, yes, that was a thing that did done gone exist. List. This was, at one point, the great hope for the Xbox. It was to be the Halo killer on the console that spawned Halo, and if you were to believe some of the more effusive games media outlets of the early noughties, Brute Force would single-handedly change the entire world for the better forever immediately. Effusive, is what I'm getting at. In practice, Brute Force was overhyped, overblown, and... All right, actually. It was nowhere near the level of Halo, of course, and it was absolutely riddled with questionable design choices. You look on, confused at the humorless self-importance that suddenly seems like maybe it's trying to be funny? You tune out the gravel-voiced idiot soldier whose wit is as dull as the plot and as overplayed as the never-ending cutscenes. You check out that jumping. But Brute Force is like hired guns on the Xbox. It's a bit cack, but still fun in a really basic way. Literally nobody in the world thought this ended up a Halo killer, but it doesn't deserve to be as forgotten as it seems to be. P.S. This is how the stealthy character is introduced. Hmm, <laughs> stealthy. Imagine Ratchet and Clank extract the personality, cram in a dose of pure 2004 style of God, I do not understand that horrible robot ponytail. Present forth an incorrect pronunciation of detritus, they all say detritus for some reason, and you have Scrapland. It was Paradroid crossed with GTA, and that's the sort of descriptor that should make a large section of you, my beloved audience, delighted to the point of mouth foaming hysteria. Except, Scrapland was a forgotten Xbox exclusive well left in the realms of just that. The ambition was undeniable, the sense of place and atmosphere genuinely quite impressive, and the imagination on show typical of American McGee. Unfortunately, the actual game bits were also typical of McGee, meaning they were interminably dull and riddled with, robo ironically, clunk. Because, like, robots clunk around, yeah? Yeah. Not to be confused with Sudoku, which is not a JRPG aping fable alike for the original Xbox, it's just a game people who say they don't like games play, even though it's a game, which they play and enjoy. Anyway, Sudeki was indeed a bit like Fable, and a bit like the JRPGs you saw none of on the Xbox because it was always and continued to be a hilarious failure in Japan. And, what can I add? Uh, it was alright. I mean, it had sticky controls, was bizarrely gory, it was very much of its time and riddled with that casual sexism you'd expect. <laughs> oh, look at that ludicrous outfit. But yeah, it was actually a decent game, especially on a format that saw very few games in the style of the Eastern RPG. The Xbox did well for the Bioware alikes, but it could have killed for a few more along Sadeki's lines. The problem with covering this game is, one, is it Cthulhu, Cthulhu, Kithlu, or something else? And two, I don't like horror games. There was a point in the past where maybe I did, but then I played a bit too much Silent Hill 4, yes, Silent Hill 4, it's better than people remember, and it fundamentally fractured my brain, rendering me unable to play horror games anymore. Oh, and I'm a coward, mustn't forget that. Anyway, Call of Kerala was a rarity in that it was published by Bethesda back in the day when Bethesda published any old tripe, yet was pretty good. Not mind-blowing, insert reference to people going insane in Lovecraft's racist diatribe, sorry, stories, but good. Ignoring the 300 million locked doors strewn about, you saw a focus on investigation over combat and a need to uncover the mystery of the dark and dank town you've ended up in. Guess what? It had horrible stealth. Oh, also the conspiracy was something involving Elder Gods and blah 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 god. Every Carthool game is like this. Described as being like Twisted Metal on the Sea, Bloodwake was like 
twisted metal on the sea. There really isn't much else to add beyond that. It saw more focused missions than just endless free-for-alls, but generally speaking it was machine guns and main weapons based combat against other similar vehicles, except on water. It was stuck with some truly awful racing bits to break up the monotony of shooting dozens of pirates to death in the most lawless seas outside of Scarborough's coastline, but was otherwise a solid bunch of fun arcade nonsense. It had its charms, as well as a story that really was determined to be told as much as humanly possible, and Bloodweight received some attention on release, though that's probably because it was an early release on the Xbox, but it was promptly forgotten about soon after. Should it have been? Probably, yes. First up, we should pay our respects to the camera systems of the early noughties, which still hadn't figured out that they should work with the player and not, as was the case in games like Crimson Sea, work them into a stabbing frenzy. That aside, this was an odd little number, bringing together a similar style of play to something like a Devil May Cry, shooting and swords basically, before stripping out anything remotely cool about it and rendering the whole effort somewhat tone deaf. While rough around the edges, Crimson Sea did have its positives. It was responsive, and while from the Dynasty Warriors folks still managed to mite more depth than those batter em all efforts do. Admittedly, one early level I played involved nothing but fighting wave after wave of identical monsters for about six and a half minutes, but you can't have everything. Hey, let's stick with the vague comparisons I've been doing in this video. Gun Valkyrie was like, um, Vanquish, maybe, or Panzer Dragoon, possibly. Something like that, at least. It was like some things I know, but I can't quite put my finger on. Anyway, as so many of my new sentences start, Gun Valkyrie was a strange little one, seeing the player running through levels which tended to be a series of glorified corridors, shooting loads of enemies, and, I don't know, doing something or other before running back and escaping. Earth Defense Force, they're the vibes it gave me. Giant Spy and all that. Space Harrier, PNO3, other things, ah, games. Anyway, for the second time, Gun Valkyrie. The controls were all over the place and make you realise how spoilt we are by modern games, but it was a cool little idea and deserved a bit more attention than it ended up getting. Ah well. Thrusting out of the shadows like an angry Okami, Otogi rushed the Xbox back in 2002, ready to educate our asses on the ways of making super cool, difficult, and inventive games featuring third person melee combat against unknowable demon forces. You know, like from Software's other famous series, Armored Core. Otogi suffered from that rough early 2000s third person camera nonsense, again, but the simple use of lock on made it infinitely more palatable than other failed attempts by similar games. Admittedly, it got a bit much when you were working against the camera and sticky combo controls, but hey ho, Demon Souls wasn't built in a day. Yeah, that's right, I'm referencing Dark Souls, aren't I cool? While definitely a fun curio in its own right, it is easy to see why Otogi was ultimately forgotten by the masses. It wasn't refined enough, it didn't balance that risk-reward system well enough, and, frankly, you can see why it didn't end up being the Dark Souls of the Dark Souls dev team. I feel that joke is a stretch, but I hope it lands with some of you. First up, I want to know what went wrong with the women in this game. They all seem to have skeletons that formed in a way, forcing their backsides to erupt out at what must be seriously uncomfortable angles. Anyway, Tao Feng was to be the spin-off from Mortal Kombat for the guy that left the series, John Tobias, or Ed Boon, one of the two, I forget which, and instead of checking I'm just going to say more words during the time I could check. There was the shred of a good idea in the game, but for every two seconds that was fluid and fun, there were three seconds of clunky dirge. There's a part of me that wants to say, you can see it look good with visible damage showing on characters as matches progressed, or something like that, but I just don't have the energy. Tao Feng was fine, it wasn't the worst thing to happen, but you can see why it didn't carry on and was promptly forgotten. Just like Ed Tobias, or John Boone, but whichever one it was. Imagine a world where Wipeout and F-Zero didn't exist. Well, don't do that actually, because then Quantum Redshift wouldn't have existed. But if they didn't exist, and this did still exist, which it wouldn't, but if it did, then this would have been remembered far more than it was. As it is, it pales in comparison to those other ones which do exist, obviously. It's a shame, because Quantum Redshift was actually good fun. A bit basic, sure, but sometimes basic future erasing is what you want to do. And there were some things that still strike me as pretty cool, like how it still looks quite nice considering its age, or how it has language specific to the country in which you're racing. Little details, innit? Nobody's likely to cry themselves to sleep over Quantum Redshift's erasure from the public consciousness. All the same, it probably deserved a handful more props than it got. So, like, three mad props to the max? Oh wait, no, wrong phantom. 
When you're releasing a mech combat game early on in the Xbox's life, you probably want to play it safe. Giant stompy robots, slow-paced methodical combat, lots of stern military folks giving you orders about stuff you don't really care about, that sort of thing. What you wouldn't be likely to do is make a game where you're greeted by a store guide called Salsa or something who's also a cat. Or a game that's riddled with loads of dogs and an owl. And a game that has a feeling of something like a jet set radio to the whole thing. You just wouldn't expect that. And yet there was Phantom Crash, willfully odd, not the sort of game you would have expected, and surprisingly good fun to boot. It was like Armored Core, well, probably more like Gran Turismo, though mainly because I've already mentioned Armored Core. Combat was quick, dip in and out stuff without much of a super serious wartime tension behind it. It controlled alright, though crikey did it need some smoothing. But yeah, I could see myself losing some time to this if it were 2002, but it is not 2002, so instead I will stick with all the fun things I do these days, like paying taxes and comparing bread makers. When you're releasing a mech combat game early on in the Xbox's life, you probably want to play it safe. Giant stompy robots, slow-paced methodical combat, lots of stern military folks giving you orders about stuff you don't really care about, that sort of thing. What you wouldn't be likely to do is make a game where you're greeted by a store guide called Salsa or something who's also a cat. Fortunately, Mech Assault didn't go down that route that literally no other game in the world would go down and instead ended up being pretty by the numbers stompy robot fare. It was a solid third-person shooter set in the world of Mech Warrior, and, well, there's not much else to say. You still didn't play it, and you did forget it exists, so there. Also, I have had, whichever tense I'm in, mad skills. As actual real-life pirates used to say, there be a YouTube's list. No, wait, that's Kenneth Williams. Anyway, add your comments below, tell me I didn't forget them, I know everything, and get no reward for it, or enjoy some nice, pleasant conversation that isn't all about one-upping each other. Up to you, really. I used to have a Patreon, but I don't now, thanks to those who did support me on that, though I don't have to say your names now, sorry. Cheers for watching, and thanks to Tesco for making such delicious toffees available for under a pound per bag. Bye!